So we are on our way to Mammoth Cave. We survived a very cold night of camping in a tent. It got down to 30 something. <laughs> it was pretty chilly, <laughs> but we survived. And now we're on our way to the cave. Yay. Here in the state of Kentucky, I got to re-explore Mammoth Cave National Park. This cave system is so crazy. Just kidding, we're in the visitor center. <laughs> it is the longest cave system in the world, with more than 400 miles of explored limestone caves that were made from flowing groundwater. Let's go on a tour and see it for ourselves. We are exploring Mammoth Cave. Woo! Mammoth Cave is located in a karst area. Karst is a landscape where the bedrock is dissolved by water and it creates sinkholes, cave systems, springs, and other features. When water percolates through the soil, it will absorb minerals from the rocks that it moves through such as calcium carbonate from limestone. Eventually, it reaches the cave ceiling and it drips. As the water evaporates and continues to drip, the minerals of the water precipitate on the ceiling. Over time, these minerals form features like stalactites, which hang from the ceiling, and stalagmites, which reach up from the floor of the cave. Water held underground in soil or in crevices in rocks is called groundwater. Groundwater is very important because it provides drinking water for over half of the U.S. population. All right, what was your favorite part of the tour? I loved the end part where we saw all the stalagmites and stalactites, the frozen Niagara, and we like walked down into like that big room with all of them around. That was pretty cool. Now let's explore the area above the cave. When it rains, the water either gets soaked up by the ground flows on top of the ground, or evaporates. The water that's soaked up by the ground is pulled downward. It can only flow through materials that are permeable, such as small rocks, soil, or sand. When water gathers underground in permeable rock, it is called an aquifer. An aquifer is like a sponge. When the groundwater flows onto the aquifer, it absorbs the water and stores it. As water flows downward, eventually it flows through the water table. The water table is a boundary underground. Below the water table is where water saturates the cracks between the pieces of sediment. This is called the saturated zone. Above the water table is the unsaturated zone, where air is found between the pieces of sediment as well. When the water table elevation equals the ground level elevation, you can sometimes find a spring. A spring is where water flows from underground aquifers to the surface. This is the River Stick Spring. The waterfall that you see here is actually groundwater coming out of Mammoth Cave. Here we are at the Echo River Spring. The water bubbling up here is also groundwater that originally came from Mammoth Cave. Humans influence groundwater in many ways. First of all, humans can extract this water by building wells. 
Wells have a pump that bring groundwater from aquifers up to the surface. They will dig to a level below the water table in the saturated zone and pump the water to ground level. We withdraw water for flood control, irrigation, drinking water, industrial use, and more. About 64% of groundwater is used for irrigation, which is needed in agricultural communities to grow food. However, if water is overdrawn from the aquifer, it can severely deplete the groundwater. For example, the Ogallala Aquifer is the largest aquifer in North America, spanning eight states. Since the 1940s, much of this area uses large-scale irrigation for agriculture. The water levels in the aquifer have dropped one to two feet every year since 1996. When the groundwater can't be recharged or replenished by water from the surface, then the levels will continue to drop, and it may get to the point that we can't get water anymore. That's why it's important to encourage the recharging of groundwater. Rivers, like the Green River, are very important because they can help to recharge the groundwater supply. We're about to go on the Green River Ferry! Yay! Yay! Another way that humans impact groundwater is by pollution. Pollution can be caused by industry, mining, burning of fossil fuels, agriculture, pesticide runoff, landfills, e-waste, and more. This pollution is a concern for groundwater because it can run off or leach down into the saturated zone and then contaminate springs, caves, and wells. If pollution gets into groundwater, there's no telling how far it will spread and it can eventually get into the drinking water of the people, plants, and animals living nearby. Pollution has many damaging health effects on humans, such as increased cancer risk, endocrine disruptors, nerve damage, and other illnesses. We can help increase the quality of groundwater by decreasing the amount of pollution we produce, even in our daily life. Scientists estimate that there could be around 600 more miles of Mammoth Cave that are currently unexplored. They learn about the groundwater by adding non-toxic dyes to the water to see where it flows. What aquifer or source supplies your water? You can learn about your own groundwater and see how you can help protect its quality.